This is the Crown Your Community Show with Ravi Shukal, episode twenty-two. This episode is sponsored by Post Planner, the app that helps you triple your social media engagement in just ten minutes a day. If you notice your Facebook reach and engagement are down, then Post Planner is for you. The app helps you find and post proven content that your audience will love, helping you to get predictable, measurable. And remarkable results with your social media posts. So, guys, if you act today, you can enjoy 30 days free access to the master plan. Simply enter code Crown30 at www.postplanner.com and start increasing your Facebook engagement today. Welcome to the Crown Your Community Show, where ambitious entrepreneurs and business owners share their secrets to growing a passionate community, helping you inspire your customers to connect. And here's your host, all the way from London, England, Ravi Shukal. Hey, Crown Your Community fans, Ravi Shukal here, and thank you for joining me for another episode of the Crown Your Community Show. You're listening to episode 22, and today I'd like to introduce you to the latest guest on the show, Angela Prophet. Angela Prophet is a celebrity wedding planner, entrepreneur, and productivity coach with more than 10 years of experience in the wedding and event industry. Angela is the owner and lead designer for Vivid Experiences, a full-service event and wedding planning company. With the help of her team, Angela's work has been featured in more than a hundred publications, including Success Magazine, People Magazine, U.S. Weekly, Grace Ormond, Wedding Style Magazine, and Style Me Pretty. In 2012, she was also recognized as one of the best wedding and event planners by Nashville Scenes Best of Nashville. Welcome, Angela. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> cool. Now, um, we've only actually recently connected here on、uh, Facebook and Twitter, as it actually happens.、Um, I'm a reader of a Success Magazine, and it was actually through reading that magazine that I came across your article, and you know, we got in touch, and I found out a bit more about your wedding planning journey.、Uh, so, what would you say then you're up to at the moment in your wedding planning business? At the moment, we are in the middle of. Planning events for spring, and、mm-hmm. we're also in the middle of planning several educational classes that I'm working on for teaching other wedding planners and event professionals how to go paperless.、Mm-hmm. And I'm working on a book, another book, to better help other entrepreneurs want to go paperless in a fun way, so they're not <laughs> so so. Overwhelmed by change. Cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I mean, I know me personally.、Um, I'm actually planning my wedding myself, and、um, it does help to be online. But you know, at the same time, I have got. I think a lot of pl- people who do the process still have like folders where they kind of store stuff and flick through. So I think it's just about streamlining what's there into something online that you can easily access, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> cool. So、um, to kick things off, then we do start the show a little differently, as we really want to get to know you better. So we take a blast from the past, and we would like to know how long did it take you to grow your online wedding community to the stage you're at today, and what do you think caused that growth? Well, I think that well, going back before. Online community and social media existed. I started、mm-hmm. my business, and I really didn't have a strategy. It was just something that I did for fun on the side. I worked in healthcare in a mental hospital. My degrees in psychology, so it's what I went to school for. And and social media did not exist.、Um, I networked through local organizations and really grew organically by just doing a good job and making sure that I communicated effectively to all of the vendors and to all of the clients and word of mouth spread. And so, after about I would say three or four years into it, then social media started. And my little brother, who's six years younger than me, said. Angela, there's this thing called Facebook, and I, I'm going to set you up a business account because you had to be a college student, but now you don't have to be. And I remember he set me up, and 
then other friends started telling me about Twitter and LinkedIn and and all of that. And without, again, a strategy, just I feel like overnight things started to grow just with me putting good, relevant, honest information out there that were that, that's really helping other people. You know, I don't I don't waste people's time on the internet internet or through social media talking about taking my dogs to the park or going to the grocery mm -hmm. store. I really <laughs> yep. try to create relative content so that anything I'm putting out there is going to help other wedding planners and other business owners somehow strategically align their business and communicate better with their clients. Mm, yeah, that's a great way of, uh, you know, going about creating your content. And also, it's good to see that, you know, obviously, social media, I wouldn't say new, but, you know, face the art of face to face networking and building those relationships is something that I think every business owner and entrepreneur needs to have in their arsenal. So I mean, getting used to that and having those relationships with your clients or vendors is definitely going to help long term. So it's great to see that you built your business that way. Yeah, absolutely. So on the show on the crown community show, one of our main focus points is customers and how to service them. So what we would like to know is why do you feel it's important to have good customer service in your business? Well, good customer service is the root to success, in my opinion. If we didn't have customers, we wouldn't have a business, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And so there's several things that I've learned, in, especially working in mental health, that communication is the key to everything. Miscommunication is so it can spiral downward so quickly and communication with clients, making sure that they understand what the message is or the product is that they're buying can really drive your future success. So one of the things that I've implemented and used in my business ever since I've had it is a methodology called True Colors. And working in psychology, I think I've done every test you can ever imagine for personalities. <laughs> And yep. True Colors was a little different. It was very fun, very, very elementary with colors and pictures. And my patients really took to it, and I connected with them because I understood them better. And so in my business, I use that methodology to work with my vendors and my clients. And really, I use it in everyday life to assess people so that I'm customizing the message for whatever their needs are to the way that they need to hear it so that they understand what I'm going to provide to them, and I want to make sure that I exceed their expectations. And without good communication, you can't do that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, have you found that they, most of them are quite open to doing that? I guess it's kind of not a survey, but, you know, answering those questions to help you establish that, um, you know, grounds to, you know, where they're coming from. Have they been quite open? Or is it something that you would use to um, maybe help analyze where, your clients or potential customers or vendors are coming from? Well, I typically do it face to face. There is an online test, but you don't get the same feedback as you uh, do. Okay. And yep. so it's actually four little cards. And it's funny because I'll pull them out and people joke, they're like, are you going to read my palm? Are these tarot cards? <laughs> I'm yeah. like, no, they're not. And I explain to them, you know, my background. And a lot of people that come to me, especially over the past five years, they already know to expect because 90% of the events that we plan, they're through word of mouth. And mm -hmm. they've heard about us or they've attended an event that we've planned. And they kind of have already heard about the process that we use, how we use the True Colors methodology, and we're 100% paperless. And so the value that we add in technology and the value that we add in selling a security blanket so that brides and grooms and corporate meeting planners know that their event information is backed up 100%. And, you know, I'm not a one-woman show, but heaven forbid yeah. I'm sick or something happens, uh, any of my team members can jump online and access all of their information. And that that is a true selling of security for our clients. I guess it's, you know, once you better know your clients and, it's, you know, you kind of better know how to serve them at the same time. So I guess having that face-to-face -face connection helps set that up for you so that's you know it's great to hear that that relationship is established in person and as well as online yeah so I mean with that in mind you did mention um 
you originally um, got introduced to Facebook and then from there you went on to Twitter and LinkedIn. But what would you then say is the one platform that you have found the most success with to grow your online wedding community? And why do you think that is? I would say most recently is Pinterest. Mm -hmm. um, I can look at someone's Pinterest page in about 10 seconds and tell you exactly what kind of person they are and exactly how I can best service them. And I'll give you an example. Sure. Before Pinterest existed, I had to go through magazines and, of course, Google Images and put together mood boards for clients. Because a lot of my clients that come to me, they don't know what they want. They might have an idea, but most of them are coming to us because they want guidance and, and they don't understand what things cost either. And so with Pinterest, when you have a Pinterest ID and you send it to me prior to our meeting, I can go ahead and get a really good feel for, for the type of person you are. So when I go onto a client's Pinterest, and again, this is before I ever even meet them, yeah. For example, if they have folders broken down to where it's cakes, flowers, dresses, hair, mm -hmm. makeup, that tells me they're pretty organized, they're pretty type A, they like an agenda, they like deadlines, and I'm able to be very efficient in, in my meetings with them. And then I have other clients where I get on Pinterest, and there's literally 3,289 images, no folders, no wow. rhyme or reason, no <laughs> pattern. And mm. to be honest with you, that's the type of clients I attract because – they have no pattern, and they have to have fun and variety and have different unique things in their life in order to be happy, and they really just want a fun party, but they want it to be memorable, and so those are the clients that need me the most to help pull mm -hmm. together a plan that's really organized in the background so everything pulls off perfectly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the social network itself is a predominantly female uh, based and um, obviously there is a male user base but uh, the female market on Pinterest I know it used to be 70% to 30% but I'm not sure what the exact figures are at this moment in time but you can obviously see the rise in more and more people jumping on board um, there's, there's one thing I would ask I mean what would you say to someone who hasn't got a Pinterest would you you'd obviously still maybe ask some different questions to get a feel of what they're looking for or you know would you suggest um, they kind of take to Pinterest to maybe scrapbook some ideas that they have before you kind of meet? Well, not, and again, not every client has Pinterest. I have some clients mm -hmm. that come to me and say, I'm a busy working professional. I don't have time for that. It's like a little kid's game, and that's why I'm hiring you. And so the approach that I take then is I ask them, give me three adjectives, three adjectives that describe your event. So when your guests walk in, what do you want them to feel when they arrive and what do you want them to feel when they leave? And just based on their three adjectives, it helps me understand where they want to spend their money and how I can best help them budget their money out. And mm -hmm. so, for example, I'll have some clients say, wow, I want a wow factor. I want it beautiful. So, you know, that's adjective one. And I want it to be mm -hmm. so fun. Entertainment's really important. And... The, the third thing is I just want it to be memorable. Um, and so those three things, you know, I would want to get a great band. I would want to focus on making their space beautiful. And some of my clients, when they give me those three adjectives, they didn't say anything about food. So they <laughs> might do you spend less on food where typically if you look at where the percentage of most of your budget is going, predominantly usually it's in the food and, and the it's alcohol. The catering. Mm. Yeah, but that's not so much the case um, all the time. And I think that's one important thing that sets us apart from other planners is I really, really psychologically want to know what is important to the client because every budget we build for our clients is totally different because I want to put their money where it matters most to them. Exactly. Yeah, I think that, you know, that personal, it's, it's a very personal thing, obviously, because the couple in question, or even if it was a business owner, you know, if they're approaching any, um, you know, professional for services, you know, tailoring it to something that they want is, you know, vital and making sure you understand what they're looking for is, you know, it's going to make sure that, you know, both parties are happy when you're going through that process. So that's definitely a good way to build up that, you know, relationship with your vendors and, you know, your potential clients as well. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we, we touched over your, um, you know, you 
said Pinterest was the platform that you found most successful when you use it to look over your clients. But if we were to kind of flip over the coin, what would you say was was your biggest challenge when you were growing that community initially? And, you know, how do you, do you feel that you overcame that challenge? Well, my biggest challenge is keeping up with all the changes <laughs> that yep. the social media platforms go through. And last year, I partnered with a company called My Event Voice and they offer social media management for Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn that helps keep your social media up to date. So during busy season, it doesn't look like you just fell off the face of the earth. And what I've learned through that process, because we did partner with Facebook, on average, I think they make make changes about three times a day from what I Mm -hmm. hear. And, (laughs) And again, it's very, very hard to keep up. And So one of the places that I focused on um, spending money is to hire other people who are experts in the social media industry. There's actually people that we work with who that's what they went to college for. Their their degree is in social media management, which that didn't exist when I went to college. (laughs) And so enlisting the help of other people has really benefited me. You know, that saying it takes money to make money. And I truly (laughs) believe in that because – you know, I've saved my money so that I could invest in people and put the right people around me to help me build success, you know, with a team effort. So I don't try to do it all, and I certainly do not have the patience to sit at the computer and learn how to do it myself. That's not a good use of my time, and so I do outsource a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a sensible way to look at it from from a productivity standpoint because then you get to focus on – you know, what you're good at and you let the people who are specialized in that area focus on what they're good at. So you're kind of getting the most efficiency from your daily routine, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, with that said, um, we know people are getting busier day by day and whether we like to admit it or not, it's actually impossible to be online 24 seven. So we'd like to know what would you say would be your top three tools or techniques that you've used to help grow that audience and maybe save you some of that time along the way? Yeah, well, before I partnered with my event voice, which they do post relative content in mm-hmm. the market. So it's not my content. It's relative content educating my viewers and, and my online community. So that's the first thing. Yep. But before that, I used Hootsuite, and I still use Hootsuite. And we do – try to schedule out at least something four times a week that are things that we're working on internally that inspire other people. And um, I would say, I mean, I don't like to schedule everything. I know that Mm -hmm. organic traffic is very important. I've had many social media experts approach me and talk to me about that. But like (laughs) you said, we don't always have time. And I do... It, while social media is important, um, at the end of the day, it's not the most important thing to me because customer service for my clients, they always come first. Uh, while social media has allowed me to grow and travel internationally and do events and has helped the company grow tremendously, very, very quickly, at the end of the day, again, still customer service is the most important thing to me. So making sure that our clients come first and then inspiration for others online comes third. (laughs) Exactly. And that's a great way to do it because, you know, like we mentioned earlier in the show, without customers, you literally wouldn't have a business. So, you know, ensuring they're happy helps the business grow, make sure, you know, make sure that your clients are happy and also helps with that word of mouth. So it's definitely a good priority to have in in, in any business, actually. So, I mean, we... So we've gone over a a few tips and we've looked at some tools that help save you time, but what would you say would be your number one piece of advice for business owners or entrepreneurs who may be looking to build up their own online community and encourage more loyal customers or even their own community in general, so whether online or offline? Well, I would say the, the first piece of advice is to definitely try to have a strategy for new businesses, I do a lot of coaching, and the first mistake I made is I didn't have a strategy. And so if you look at my Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and all of those, there, nothing is is branded the same. And so the new people coming in before they even choose their business name, I'm trying to help them make sure that not, not only the domain is available, but 
the Facebook page and the Twitter and all those links so that you can have continuity across the board because branding is so, so important. So that's the first thing that I really try to, to help others with. And then the second thing would be just the content and make yep. sure, again, as you're branding that you want your online community to know what type of events that you plan and to not post things that misrepresent your brand or misrepresent who you are or what you do or what you offer. Because again, that's miscommunication, right? Yeah. And then the third thing, which doesn't have too, too much to do with social media, but again, I really sure. encourage people to do um, you know, online, to use the cloud, to be paperless so that they can delegate with others. And we use Wonderlist and we use Dropbox and we use Google Drive and a lot of these applications are free and they're all backed up online you can access your clients folders as as you would call them yeah. right on your phone and your phone becomes your mobile office which i love and it helps us be very efficient in the office mm -hmm. and out of the office yeah that's, that's a great way of putting it i never heard a mobile phone uh, you know referred to literally as a mobile office but you know in reality it's something that you can easily have you know access to information on the go and you know typically run your business from it so i guess it makes total sense um to picture it as a mobile office so um yeah i'll make sure we link all those um tools that you mentioned and resources in the show notes so um on the crying new community show we do promote um entrepreneurs and business owners to spend as much time offline as well as online when running the business so, I mean, with that said, we'd like to know, has it been a single book or an event that has impacted your business directly or helped in any way at all? I wouldn't say there's one specific thing. I will say that I do go to a lot of conferences. I, I'm a part of the entrepreneur organization. I'm, I'm in a forum group and we meet monthly. And mm -hmm. just listening to other tips and tricks and techniques, we all learn from each other. We are all in completely different industries. But at the end of the day, we are all business owners, and we all we all share the same struggles. We I feel like, and um, you know, a couple tips that I've taken away from others is learning from their mistakes. And distraction is the number one problem. And yeah. you, you know, if you're looking at your phone and you've got all the apps downloaded, and I just keep seeing it going from one, two, three, and at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I have 130 notifications on Facebook, and you know, again, I don't let I don't I do not let that distract me. I try to set aside time at the end of every day to go back to it. And during busy season, sometimes it doesn't even get looked at until Sunday because yeah. that's that's not the most important thing. So I would encourage others to use social media to grow your online community, but don't let it distract you from being productive and from working mm. on your business instead of in your business. Yeah, I think that's a great way to look at it because obviously it's so easy to get lost online with um, you know, responding to every single comment as it comes in or making sure all the channels have you know, enough content every single day and you're, you know, you're kind of on the spot there to reply. So it, <clears throat> streamlining that time to go through it when you're most free is obviously definitely a good way to look at it and definitely a good way for anyone who's got those social channels to manage it in a way that's not going to affect their productivity for the rest of the day or week. So that's uh, definitely some great advice there. Um, so we have talked about uh, customers being your central focus. And I mean, with that said, we know people prefer to do business with those they know, like and trust. So what would you say is one way that you have built trust with your wedding community? Well, even in the office and, and face to face, I also have a lot of clients that I don't even meet until the weekend that we're doing the wedding. And I think that that trust has been built because of the online videos that I put out yeah. there. So I put a lot of video content, not only for my events, but from an educational perspective. I'm big on quality, and sometimes it's, it's not even about having the right lighting or the best audio. I just want to help people understand that, hey, you can do this, and don't give up, and don't get depressed or get stressed. There's people out there yeah. like myself who can help you. 
And it's funny because when I just came back from a conference in L.A. and so many people came up to our booth talking to me as if they knew me. And so I've learned to say, it's so nice to see you because they, we interact online. But, you know, there's thousands of people that we interact with every day online. And through all these videos, you know, people will quote me and, and tell me, come up to me and say, you helped me so much. Thank you so much for posting that video. And, and I love that. I love that people come up to me and, and tell me those things. But, again, without me even – trying to connect with everybody just by offering mentorship and helping them through video, they feel like they know me and, and mm-hmm. that builds trust. And so having people call me and leaving me a voicemail saying, I don't know how much you cost, but I saw your video online and we have to hire you. Please call us ASAP because we are stressing. That's the best feeling ever. And I watch my analytics on through Google Analytics, which is a free service. And I know when people are watching my videos from beginning to end, and I know what videos are being put out there to make sure that they're relative and they're being helpful. So I would definitely say video is one of the number one ways to build trust. Yeah, I think it's also one of those um, types of content where um, they actually see and kind of kind of can get genuine feel of for who you are. I mean, a blog post is obviously great as well to reflect your you know tone of voice and the way you speak but obviously video you've got the additional sound you've got the actions you've got your expressions and mannerisms so there's you know there's literally nowhere to hide so they can actually see you know the real you and have that chance to kind of listen and see how you kind of portray things and you know that at the same time that's a great way for them to pick up that you know this is someone that's really genuine and passionate about what she does yeah Cool. So that actually nicely brings us on to our final question, which we've named the time traveler. So you may need to think back on this one. So take your time and don't be afraid to get lost in thought before answering. So here we go. What were you doing the last time you looked at a clock and realized you had lost all track of time? Well, being a productivity coach, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty good with, uh, with time because I, my calendar is literally scheduled from the time I wake up, from the time I go to bed, I feel like. Um, it doesn't happen very often where I don't, I'm not on to the next thing because I have yeah. reminders set up on my computer and my phone and my iPad giving me a 10-minute reminder, hey, you got to be here. You need to do this. I even scheduled the office days and the time at my desk and when I'm going to be working on books and when I'm going to be filming my videos. And so when I'm not with mm-hmm. clients, I have learned that I'm, I, I want to do a million things to help others, but I'm not ever going to finish anything if I don't get control of my time. And for me, time is money, and you can't ever buy back that time. So I'm very aware of what I'm doing with my time. Yeah. And, um, but, but I can get lost with clients, and I mean, I could just talk their ear off all day because I'm so excited about their events, but yeah. I can't really allow myself to not look mm-hmm. at the clock um, sure. because – because that's who I am and what I do. I teach people how to be productive with their time. So there's <laughs> not, I can't really tell you the last time. I mean, when I'm flying to London and I'm on a 14 hour flight, I am looking at the clock and wondering how much longer until I land. <laughs> but of course, I also plan out what I'm going to be working on on the plane. So I'm, I'm usually pretty aware of, of what's going on. I don't, I try not to lose track of time that much. <laughs> yeah, that that sounds very productive. I know. I mean, we've had different guests on the show, and you know, there's been different things from uh, driving my, you know, driving my car. They kind of get lost in thought to maybe working on one of their hobbies. So I guess it's different for everyone. So it's good to see, you know, the other side of the coin where you know you've got all your, you know, tasks and um, you know to dos in place. So you you ensure that there's minimal time wasted and. So is, is, are those tasks also for, um, you know, more personal things? So let's just say for business, you'll be like, I don't know, check emails might be one hour. Then would it literally be like lunch is scheduled in, in as a set time? And then you'll be like, 
um, you know, even if you went to the movies or something else or, you know, something outside the business, is everything in that structure or is it literally only business related tasks? No, again, like I'm a pretty structured person um, just because I have to be because I have so much that I want to do. Um, yeah. And, you know, even family time and Sunday family dinners and times mm-hmm. with my nieces. And I mean, I was just talking to my sister on Sunday at our family dinner and I haven't been able to be at a family dinner in five weeks my family's like it's nice that you're still alive Angela because I've been traveling and out of town and <laughs> yeah and my niece I uh, promised that I would take her to this new movie and she said it's not in theaters anymore because wow. you have been out of town and she's <laughs> like when are you going to schedule a time so I can just come over and watch this movie with you and I'm not a big movie person because, again, if I'm not into it, I, I feel like sure. it's a waste of time. And, yeah, of course. But because it's important to her, and obviously she's my oldest niece, and it, a mm-hmm. lot of people think that she's my child. I'm teaching her to be a little wedding planner, and she's only 12. <laughs> um, but it's important to her. And so I pulled out my calendar, and we scheduled a time. And so even personal time for dinners and movies and dates and friend time, I really yeah. – try to schedule that out I'm I'm I can I'm a very flexible person and I like to be doing something different all the time but again to be productive I really feel like it, things have to be scheduled so the things that I do outside of work you know obviously working out every try to yeah. work out every day and <laughs> going to church and if I'm traveling I get online and, and watch it on Sunday and so there's things that you know I do outside of business that are very important balanced life is so important and when I was building my business for about the first five years I did nothing but work 26 hours a day and there's only 24 Mm -hmm. hours in a day but you know (laughs) after about five years I looked up and thought wow I blinked my eyes and oh my gosh I'm 30 and I really need to enjoy life and and take care of myself and take care of my family and so balance is very, very important. But again, I got to schedule it in. I, and in order to be balanced, I have to. Yeah. It has to be on my schedule. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for I mean, for the listeners who are um, listening, in, um, if they wanted to kind of follow the same pattern, what's the best way to go about it? Would, would they? Would you say they do it a day before or a week before? So how how much often or how often in advance are you actually? planning these activities so you stay that organized well again my clients come first usually usually and they're booking me usually a year in advance and so when someone books me out I know that there's four days throughout that year that I have to really spend with them or talk with them so I try to plan those ahead of time to not overbook myself but I do have other girls in the company that that can plan just like I can. So, you know, hopefully I never have to turn away business. Um, but I would say, you know, about two weeks out. I mean, two I put okay. standing things on the calendar, such as workout classes and, again, church times and, again, things that are standing. You know, I go ahead and I do that a year out. Like for all my networking meetings, I know that they're the last Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. and and so forth. And then Tuesday, Thursdays, we really try to have meetings for 12 hours straight and then on Monday Wednesdays we try to have office days and productive days where behind the scenes we're doing things and usually on Fridays we're getting ready for an event so most of our events happen on Saturdays for weddings mm-hmm. um, and so really structuring out everything allows you to again be more efficient with your time and then when you do want to build fun things in or you need flexibility it's great to have other people that I can delegate to that I've trained over the years that can free up my time. So, you know, again, that comes with time. I mean, for the first seven years I did this by myself and then I added an internship program and decided to keep the ones that were good and the ones that did not enjoy working in customer service. I helped them find that they did not like customer service and they were onto something bigger and better. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Now that's a good way to do it. It's, it's, it's nice to know that obviously you've kind of found that rhythm that works because, you know, I can imagine if you carried on doing everything yourself, you'd literally be in burnout stage right now. So it's good to see that, every, you know, there is a system, you know, it's good to systemize everything when you're looking to, you know, increase that productivity. So that's, just, it's so important. I mean, when you're first getting started, obviously a lot of the 
the people that I coach, they get so uh, stressed and overwhelmed. And I tell them, mm-hmm. like, don't be overwhelmed. It's good for you to know how to do everything. But when you can afford to jump out on a limb and start hiring help, make a list of things that you hate doing and surround yourself with people that are not like you so that they enjoy doing the things that you don't like doing. And then as you grow, different people have different roles in the company. And that's what I tell my clients now. I There's three things that I do, and I do it well, and I know what I do. And, again, I do it well, and that's designing from a psychological standpoint and explaining budget and then building a timeline because I know all the rules of the venues and I know the right questions to ask. But when it yeah. comes to day-to-day tasks and scheduling and doing to-do lists and following up and babysitting vendors and so forth. I am not great at that. I can make the best to-do list ever, but when it comes to really doing it, I have someone else do that because she loves getting 53 things knocked off her list in a day. But hmm. I don't I don't really want to work from a to-do list. I really want to be out and about and be creative with my clients and meetings, and that's what I love to do. But again, it took a good seven years to get there before I could enlist the help of others. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it does take time because you want to build the business up to a level where you're comfortable in doing that, rather than um, you know maybe spending too much and you know having it having it as something that you're always watching over. So it's nice to have that flexibility and to know that obviously you built that your business up over time to kind of afford yourself to do that. So um, if our listeners want to find out more about what you do, what would you say is the best way to reach you? Uh, they can visit my website. It's Angela Profit, P-R-O-F-F-I-T-T dot com and connect with me through social media there. We have all the little icons at the bottom <laughs> so that people can can connect. I feel like it's pretty easy to find people these days online with yep. with all the great you know like like you said the online community it's just building over time and I think it's such a great powerful tool if used in the right ways <laughs> <laughs> definitely now we'll be sure to link that up in the show notes so just want to say thank you for taking out the time to speak to us today Angela we wish you all the success and thank you for sharing that journey with us on how you crown your community Thank you for having me. Don't forget, if you would like all the show notes and resources mentioned in this show, simply send me a direct message on my Facebook fan page over at facebook.com forward slash Ravi Shukru. You've been listening to the Crown Your Community Show, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. And for more info, visit RavishUgal.com.